Hey there, fourth graders. This is Mrs. Smith. Today we are doing Unit 2, Lesson 2, which is on page 47 of your math book. You will need your uh, math board for this, so go ahead and make sure you have that. If you have a skinny whiteboard marker, those work best, but you gotta do what you gotta do and use what you have, so don't stress about it. Okay, so yesterday or in the last video we talked about um, our different way to represent multiplication through an area model. Today we're going to sort of continue with that idea. We are using our knowledge of base 10, which is how our numbers are organized, to help us understand multiplying things by 10, 100, 1,000, a million. All those things are possible because of our system is based on the number 10. So says you have learned about the base 10 pattern in place value. This model shows how place value and multiplication are connected. So when I first looked at this picture, I was like, wait, are these connected? They're similar, but they're not connected. So we could draw a little line through there. So just how you can recognize the number 20 as two tens like that, you can also recognize 20 groups of 10 like this. That's like, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20 tens as 20 times 10, right? And because of that, you know this group of 10, ten, or 10 tens, I should say, 10 tens we know is 100. Another 10 tens is also 100. So rather than thinking about this as 20 tens, we could think about it as two hundreds. Okay, it sounds a little bit, I don't know. You'll get the hang of it, I swear. Okay, so you can use the properties, which are different like rules in math, to show how, to show the relationship between place value and multiplication. So here we have um, 10 times 20, and you can look at that as 10 times, in parentheses, 2 times 10, and that's because of the associative property. You can break things into their factors or put them together within multiplication. And then you can actually rearrange the parentheses so it's uh, 10 times 2 and then times 10. And then because of the commutative, with a T in there, commutative property, you're allowed to rearrange the order of the products as long as all you're using is multiplication. Just how like in adding with the commutative property of addition, you can have five plus six or six plus five and either way it equals 11, right? So you can rearrange those um, factors there. And then again, with your associative property, you can move those parentheses and do the 10 by 10 first, which you know is 100, and then you have two times 100, which is 200. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try that now with uh, a different multiple of 10, 50. And we're practicing this, but you can use this. It says 10 times any number of tens gives you that number of hundreds. Because here you have five tens, right? And you're going to push the five aside for a moment, like we did here, push that two to the side and have the 10 multiply with the 10 and then it's 100 and then you just have that number of hundreds, okay? So uh, let's do that here. So you know that 10 times 50, you could look at as 10 times five times 10 and then you can scooch that parentheses over so it's 10 times 5 times 10. And then, let's see, I'm trying to follow this pattern, not make it too confusing. So 5 times 10, 5 times 10. Then you can move that, yeah, you move that 5 over to this side. So it's 5 times 10 times 10. And then you have five and you scooch the parentheses over. That's all we're doing there. So we do that first, five times, 10 times 10. <laughs> and then you have five 
times 100, and then you just have 500. So the scooching of the parentheses, in this case, it's not super duper duper necessary. It's just indicating which step you would do first. Um, because if you remember, there's PEMDAS. And by having something in parentheses, that indicates that that's the first thing you should do in the order of operations that we talked about earlier. Okay. Now, there's a similar question to this if you're going to do the Think Central activity. If you're in my class, you will be. Um, so uh, this is really similar, so pay attention. Olivia wants to tile the top of a table. The table is 20 inches by 30 inches. Olivia needs to find the area of the table in square inches. That's what you call that 2D measurement, right? Find the area of this 20 by 30 rectangle by dividing it into 10 by 10 squares of 100. So they did the first one here for us. If you don't believe me, we could count uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's 10 on that side, 10 on that side because it is a square. And that means this length here is also 10. This length here, maybe let's measure it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10. Like there, that's 10. And then this length here. So this side is 30, and this side is 20. Now, if you have nothing but time, you could draw all the lines, and then you could, uh, in between each square, and then you could count it all. But we want something more efficient than that. So um, if we look here, now that we know how to use our skills for getting hundreds, we're going to use those groups of 10, and now we have 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Now that's a lot easier, right? Counting them by hundreds. So then we just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hundreds, or 600, right? So how many tiles does she need? She needs 600 tiles. Each box of tiles contains 100 tiles. How many boxes does Olivia need to buy? So how many groups of 100 are there in 600? There are six. Okay. So, uh, complete the steps to show your work in exercise two numerically. So what we did here, we had 20 times 30 and we transformed that into two times 10 and three times 10. Then we're gonna push those off to the side and do two times three times 10 times 10. And then that two times three multiplies to six. And then we have 600 because it's six times 100. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. Is it true that 20 times 30 equals 30 times 20? What do you think? There's a couple different ways you could answer this. One, so the answer is yes. And you could say because of the Commutative property. You could also say yes because they both equal 600. You could also say yes because 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2, and 2 times 3 times 100 equals 3 times 2 times 100. There's more than one way to answer that, but the answer is yes. Okay, go ahead and check and see if you have an assignment, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for joining me. As always, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.